special presentation of John Hagee Today. And now, Pastor John Hagee. I want to welcome those of you who are watching by television to this very special telecast. Generally, you see me preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to an auditorium packed with people. But today, I want to introduce you to Bob Cornuke who has made one of the most amazing archaeological discoveries of the 20th century, the real Mount Sinai. As a result, he's produced a fascinating video account of his search for the real Mount Sinai. Before I talk to Bob, however, I'd like for you to see a portion of that video. The location of Mount Sinai, also called Mount Horeb, has baffled archaeologists and scholars alike for years. The Bible talks about this mountain through the pages of the book of Exodus. It chronicles God's deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt and the place where Moses received the laws of God. But did Mount Sinai ever really exist? Or was its biblical account only myth and legend? Larry Williams and Bob Cornock are an unlikely pair. One a sophisticated commodities trader, and the other a former Southern California cop. But the friendship they forged would unlock a world of mystery that neither could have ever expected. The search for the real Mount Sinai would be no easy task. Pieces of evidence would have to fit together like a complex puzzle. And like a crime scene investigation, every lead had to be looked at. This was a process Bob Cornock knew well. Well, the crime scene always talks to you. There's a story there. I let it tell me a story, and the Bible told me a story about Mount Sinai, and I think that's why we were very successful. Whenever you're doing uh, the type of work we do, you need to do some real simple things. Take major observations and do it with a very clear mind, not a, oh, I want to prove a point mind, but what do the facts show? You can't have a, a conclusion, and a premise, and then look for the data to support it. Bob, welcome to the Cornerstone Telecast. It's a pleasure to be here, Pastor. We're delighted to have you. Bob is an FBI-trained investigator, and he became interested in the discovery of the real Mount Sinai. For years, Bible scholars have had trouble confirming that the Mount Sinai in the Sinai Peninsula was in fact the real Mount Sinai. And here are the reasons why. There are no altars there because we know the children of Israel sacrificed there. There is no cave of Elijah there. There are no stoned boundaries at the traditional Sinai place where the children of Israel were forbidden to come closer to the mountain. The fact is that Helena, the mother of Constantine, is the one who named it. And if you know anything about Middle East history, you know that Helena named a lot of things that were according to her own investigation that weren't necessarily accurate. So, Bob, I'm asking you today, what motivated you to start searching for the real Mount Sinai? Well, there was no evidence found at the traditional mountain. Archaeologists have combed that mountain from top to bottom. They haven't found one clay pot, not one bone, nothing that would indicate that this is Mount Sinai. So we must conclude that either the event of the Exodus did not occur at all, or that it's placed somewhere else. So what we did is we took out the Bible and we used it as a map, as a compass, and it pointed to Saudi Arabia as the place where the real Mount Sinai should be. I know that Israel has some of the finest archaeologists in the world, and the traditional Sinai was under their supervision for years, and they found absolutely nothing there. So what is the problem with the traditional Sinai? The, the altars are not there, and what else? Well, there's no boundary markers around the mountain, and just the sheer size of the camp area needed for the children of Israel, there's only one square yard per person at the traditional mountain. And also when Moses killed that man when he was 40 years old, he fled to the land of Midian, he wouldn't have gone to the Sinai Peninsula. Pharaoh had his turquoise mines. Pharaoh had his copper mines. It was, had military emplacements, and the Philistines were there in the north. It was an unfriendly territory to go to. He went out of Egypt, as the Bible says, to the safe place, 
Midian, which is modern-day Saudi Arabia. What are the major reasons that you believe, along with other major Bible scholars, that Jabal el Laws is, in fact, the real Sinai? Primarily because the Bible says in Galatians 4.25 that Mount Sinai is in Arabia. It's not even in the Sinai Peninsula. Over 70 times it was mentioned in Scripture that the children of Israel went out of Egypt and also the ancient land of Midian is the proper location of Mount Sinai because when Moses killed that man, he fled to the ancient land of Midian. He met God at the burning bush in Midian while tending Jethro's flocks, who was the priest of Midian. So we know that Mount Sinai has to be in the ancient land of Midian for it to be a candidate to be the real Mount Sinai. Hmm. Tell us now, uh, as I have seen this video, about one of the most interesting aspects to me of this entire fantastic story, which is the underwater bridge mm -hmm. that is under the Red Sea. This is in the video. Well, Scripture refers to the Gulf of Aqaba as the Red Sea. It's the right fork of the Red Sea on the east side of the Sinai Peninsula. But this land bridge comes from the tip of the Sinai Peninsula and goes across through the sea into Saudi Arabia. What do I mean by going through the sea? It's this massive land that comes up with two sides to it that are very steep. And it's this ribbon of land that goes under the water all the way over into Saudi Arabia. They would have needed to have this because the water levels there are just too deep. It goes up to 2,000 feet deep. So they couldn't have gone down like the Grand Canyon and across and up the other side. They would have needed some way to cross through the sea. Isaiah 51 says, I'll make for you a roadway through the sea. Now, it's very important to see that the tip of the Sinai Peninsula is referred to as Yom Suf, the Sea of Land's End. Scripture says they cross through the Red Sea at Yom Suf, the Sea of Land's End. And mistakenly, people have assigned that to the Bitter Lakes region. That's only one to two feet of water. And Scripture says they went through the sea. The Egyptian army sung like stones in the mighty sea. It keeps referring to the ocean and to the sea not a body of water that's only one to two feet of water, plus Pharaoh, with the caliber of soldiers that he had, would have gone around that lake and headed them off on the other side. Instantly. Instantly. It had to have been a hopeless situation. They went around to the tip of the Sinai Peninsula. The mountains hemmed them in. The Bible says the wilderness has hemmed them in. And with Pharaoh coming upon them, the mountains behind them, they had only one place to go, and that was into the sea on top of this land bridge. And this massive water, these walls of water split, and the children of Israel went through on dry ground. And then the Egyptians followed them. Moses raised his staff in his hands, and the water crashed down upon all the Egyptian army and killed them all. I think that's one of the most fascinating elements of this whole story, because I've read extensive uh, Bible scholars who were trying to find, figure out how, in heaven's name, all of that water stood straight up. Some have said that a wind blew it there, but if wind was strong enough to keep that much water up, you wouldn't be able to walk through no, that. Would that would be a wind tunnel right. that'd literally bowl you over like a tumbleweed. So the concept of the sea and the bottom of it opening up and there being a highway across the bottom of the sea, which you'll see when you see this uh, in, in the video. We went on a diving expedition to survey this land bridge. And it's this massive land that comes out of the depths of the deep ocean and creates a roadway through the sea to the other side. The people have to be able to walk. They can't just uh, slide down a cliff on one side, um, muck their way through the, through the silt and slime, and somehow scale a cliff on the other side to get out of this basin. Some type of um, submarine topography had to exist so that uh, as God supernaturally uh, parted the waters, the, the path that they would take could be dried out by the wind that accompanied that event. An ancient mystery on the brink of revelation. Mount Sinai, thought for centuries to be on the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. Could it be we've been wrong all this time? Biblical adventurer Bob Cornuke and his companion Larry Williams embark on a journey that will change their lives forever. The search for the real Mount Sinai. To order your VHS copy, call 1-800-854-9899.
In addition to the video, you'll also receive a colorful map highlighting all the features of this incredible discovery. Call now, 1-800-854-9899 and ask for offer SO92. It's just $30 plus shipping and handling. We'll include the special map absolutely free. Call 1-800-854-9899. Tell us about the other links of the chain that fit in, the, the bitter lakes and the bitter springs of Mara. Connect those now. Well, <clears throat> when they crossed through the Red Sea, the Bible says the next campsite was a three-day journey inland. We didn't know what a three-day journey would be with elderly and the animals, but we estimated it could be about 30 kilometers. And 33 kilometers inland, we found these springs of water in a two-acre area that had bitter water, and so bitter that when you touched them to your tongue, you, you immediately had to spit it out. For four or five hours later, you'd still have this horribly terrible, bitter taste in your mouth. We feel that that was the bitter springs of Mara. And then the Bible says they journeyed on, and the, uh, one of the next stops was the 70 palms and 12 springs of Elam. Now, we found this grove of palm trees. We don't know if it was, you know, we didn't count 70 palm trees. That was 3,500 years ago. But it was a grove of palm trees, but amongst the trees we found these beautiful, crystal clear springs of fresh water coming up out of the ground. And we counted 12 of them amongst the palm trees. And that really got our heart going. We felt now we may be actually on the route of the Exodus. And the important thing to remember here is that none of these things exist at the traditional Mount Sinai site that's in the Sinai Peninsula. Like a puzzle, the pieces were all fitting together. But what would they discover at the top of Jabal al lors If this was the holy mountain that God touched, what would they find? We saw looming up in front of us this mountain, about 8,000 foot peak, Jabal al lors And the very unique thing about the top of it is that it's black on the top. Why is the top of this mountain black and none of the other mountains around there are black on the top? And it's like such an unusual, just a visual image. And we were drawn to climb this mountain to see what these unique black rocks were. And so the climb began, and we eventually got there. And when we got to the top, we found these rocks that were blackened on the outside. They were shiny black, uh, as if some kind of an external heat source melted them. Which fits again with scripture that says that this mountain was touched by God and by fire and lightning and whatever. So it would make sense it would be blackened. And God said he descended on the mountain in flames of a furnace. And then uh, Larry said, hey, they may be volcanic, so I took a big rock and I slammed it down on top of another one. We broke off a chunk of this and we were amazed when we looked at this rock. It was melted, crusty on the outside, but it was granite on the inside. We broke other rocks in the area. Sure enough, all of them, they were melted black on top, were granite on the inside. And the traditional Mount Sinai has none of this. It has nothing on the top of it. It doesn't have, the, the top is not charred. Uh, there's no caves. There's no boundary markers. And there's no, like you said, the crack archaeologists are from Israel. They combed that mountain for 16 years. Their report was conclusive. Nothing has been found. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now tell us about the boundary markers that you found around this mountain. They were at exact locations and they were stone. Tell us about that. Well, there were, there were piles of rock, and so when we first look at these rocks, it's hard to get excited about just a pile of rocks. They were very substantial, about 20, 25 feet in diameter, four or five feet out of the ground, but they were placed strategically every 400 yards in a perfect two-mile semicircle around the mountain. Now, the rocks were not jagged. Like you see, if someone quarried rock, they'd be jagged. The sand blowing over the centuries have really made these rocks very smooth on the outside, so we know they're ancient. We don't know how old they are. You can't date rocks. 
So, but we had these strategically placed, indicating to us that they were some kind of marking system or boundary marker system. Very interesting because the Bible talks about the boundary markers around Mount Sinai to keep the people away from the mountain. That's absolutely all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Now, here is a, a, a major piece of the puzzle in the altar where they sacrificed the golden calf, recognizing that these were the people who built uh, Pharaoh's pyramids. These were people who knew how to move rocks. Tell us about that altar that you found that uh, has the golden calf on the side of it. This altar is, as you mentioned, Pastor Hagee, that it was, it was made by man, and these rocks were moved into place and pulled and pushed, and it would have taken hundreds, maybe even thousands of men to do this. Of course, you're right. The workforce of Pharaoh was well-skilled in these large-scale construction projects. This high aid footage was smuggled out of the country at great risk. But the most unusual point is that cattle are not indigenous to Saudi Arabia. It's sheep country, it's goat country, there's no cattle there. So to see a, a cattle, a cow figure on an extremely old petroglyph also really got me going, saying, yeah, you know, we're, we're onto something here. Later on we did find that they were Egyptian artwork and that this probably was the altar that they made the golden calf because we have this ancient bull god Apis inscribed on several places on this huge altar. Now this altar was man-made. It would have taken hundreds, maybe even thousands of men to move the boulders in place to make this altar. Of course, they had the entire workforce of Pharaoh at their disposal, and they did have the skill of working on large-scale projects. The petroglyphs are representing Egyptian cattle, which of course are not native to that part of the country at all, and certainly would have been the kinds of cattle that they brought from the land of Egypt. It's not a place where someone would go and uh, counterfeit an Egyptian petroglyph uh, in the middle of nowhere where it's never going to be seen for no reason. So I think that's probably the most significant thing that was found there. All of these pieces of the puzzle are coming together for an archaeological confirmation of the validity of the Word of God. But when you got to this mountain, this mountain is surrounded by a chain link fence that has razor wire on the top with signs hung on the side, saying you're prohibited from entering here. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that mountain? Well, we waited till night, and we took these starlight scopes, night scopes. And it was very precarious to walk at night, but we had to go around the outside. We actually walked miles up on the side of the hill with these night scopes, and I'm, I'm scared of snakes, and so I'm going along, and I'm trying to look for snakes. And, and they're and Anybody who's intelligent is afraid <laughs> of snakes. So I'm walking for, looking for the snakes. So I'm going with Larry, and we're watching, and we went around and up and over the ridge, and as we crossed over this ridge in the moonlight, and we, we stood on the, and, the, and the, the wind was coming up and howling from the desert and coming up. It was a very, very surreal, beautiful moment, and we looked down and we beheld the whole valley with the altars and the pillars and could almost visualize the campfires of the Israelites living there. It was the perfect setting for where we feel this event occurred in history. Do you believe that the Saudi Arabian government will ever allow Christian groups to go there? I don't believe the Saudi government will ever allow anybody to go there because if this is Sinai, which I do believe that it is the real Mount Sinai, there could be some very sensitive political and, and, and uh, cross uh, re re religious conflicts there. We have, this is a famous Jewish site, Christians would want to go there and see this site. And the Saudis, of course, really have a closed country, and they wouldn't want to have this conflict uh, of these people coming into the country. They wouldn't want to do anything to validate the Judeo-Christian faith. I don't believe they would, and I think they're going to keep this mountain away from the rest of the world. Well, in the millennial reign, we'll get to go over there and look it over, because I assure you that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he rules from the Temple Mount, will give us that opportunity. Tell us what message that you would like to present to the body of Christ with this amazing discovery, the real Mount Sinai. Well, for me, when I was, uh, I, I grew up in an education system that was secular and told me that the Bible is myth and legend, that these stories are simply created by the Hebrews with a good moral message. Yes. And we should take these as just good lessons in morality. And I think that they're revealed to us by God Almighty as historical fact 
and that these stories have relevance to us today. Mm -hmm. They tell us of God's saving grace, of his power, of, his, of, of the Ten Commandments revealed to us. And the Ten Commandments are now being pried off the walls of our government facilities and taken out of the schools. And we can see the results of that because the Ten Commandments are the basis for all of our laws. And yes, now we're, they're, they're, they're relegated to just myth and legend, but they are the foundation of all our laws and all our morality. The Bible says the very rocks will cry out and testify of me if, this nation, if, my, if the people will not praise me. And I think that it's a, a, a unique moment in history where the Lord is allowing the real Mount Sinai, the place where the Ten Commandments were actually found at the exact moment that in America we're throwing the Ten Commandments out of public schools and the Word of God is under attack from all quarters. But archaeologists are finding on a regular basis now monuments in stone, testimonies in stone, that the Word of God is absolutely true and that what God has said happened just like God said. Those of you who are watching by television, let me give you some quotes of famous Christian leaders around the nation about this amazing discovery that they have seen. Gary Bauer has said, and I quote, Bob Carnuk has fascinated audiences nationwide with his powerful yet humorous presentations of his many searches for the ancient biblical location. And then the second quote from Coach Bill McCartney of Promise Keepers. Coach McCartney says, quote, when I watch the video footage of Mount Sinai in Bob Carnuk's presentation, it was the most powerful thing I have ever seen. I believe his findings, as perhaps nothing else I've ever seen or heard, will both strengthen and encourage the heart of the believers." End of quote. And then Dan Quayle, former Vice President of the United States, says, and I quote, Bob Carnuke's presentation will captivate you as he takes you along on his incredible adventures. I want you to see this video. I have watched it and I have been inspired by the biblical, historical, and archeological evidence that this is the place where God descended and the mountain was literally aglow with the fire of God as a furnace. And God spoke the 10 laws of the 10 commandments that have shaped the destiny of the human race. Here's how to get a video copy of the most amazing Bible discovery since the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I encourage you to get your copy today. An ancient mystery on the brink of revelation. Mount Sinai, thought for centuries to be on the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. Could it be we've been wrong all this time? Biblical adventurer Bob Cornuke and his companion Larry Williams embark on a journey that will change their lives forever. The search for the real Mount Sinai. To order your VHS copy, call 1-800-854-9899. In addition to the video, you'll also receive a colorful map highlighting all the features of this incredible discovery. Call now, 1-800-854-9899, and ask for offer SO92. It's just $30 plus shipping and handling. We'll include the special map absolutely free. Call 1-800-854-9899. Bob, what other evidences did you find around this mountain that would lead you and other Bible scholars to conclude this is, in fact, the real Mount Sinai? Well, there was a cave on the mountain. At the traditional mountain, there is no cave at all. In fact, there are other mountains that people have supposed to be Mount Sinai throughout the centuries, but there's been no cave on them. And this has a cave that overlooks the valley below. And this is where, of course, the Bible says that Elijah put the cloak over his face and stood in the mouth of the cave and looked at the valley below. And then uh, uh, we uh, found this, uh, this, this altar that was 60 feet by 60 feet, two wing sections. There were 120 feet altogether, about 20 feet deep, that had these round rock 
pillars in front of them. And the Bible says that Moses was to build an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 stone pillars and do burnt offerings. We found that this altar site was amazing. It was an altar site where they did burnt offerings. We found this ancient ash compressed down underneath the earth where they did burnt offering ceremonies. And then these stone pillars out in front of this altar, we, could, we, we believe they are the 12 pillars of Moses because they're white stone pillars carved and they stack one on top of another to form the pillars in front of this. So it's very interesting. At the foot of the mountain, we have an altar, as the Bible says, uncut stone, as the Bible says, no steps. They did burnt offerings and have pillars in the front of them. Very amazing coincidence. Then the next thing is we found a huge rock, monolithic rock, rising up out of this knoll that is about 50-some feet high that is split right down the middle, about 19 inches wide. And this is very interesting because Moses struck a rock. Water came from this rock. The people cried out for water. Moses struck the rock. It split and water gushed from it. The Bible says like a river. And next to this big split rock, there's evidence that the whole side of the mountain at one time had a river flowing over it. The rocks are actually smooth from the constant erosion from this heavy volume of water. This gets a half an inch of rain every 10 years here. What's to explain why this huge amount of water has rushed for a long time over these rocks? Other than this is the split rock of horror because right below it, this whole valley, the sand has been washed away completely. You can see evidence of an ancient lake bed there where the water filled up. Of course, the children of Israel would have needed a lake of water. They would have been so thirsty. Not like you see in these paintings where a little trickle of water comes out after Moses strikes the rock. It would have gushed out over. And this is the evidence that we find showing that this had to have been a supernatural event. I think it's interesting that this split rock of Horeb uh, is a prototype of the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, and at the cross, his side was split, and out of his side came blood and water, through which the sins of humanity are forgiven, and we're all saved. The thing that Israel had to have that day was living water, and lots of it and it was sufficient enough to save the nation. And the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ are sufficient enough to save the nations of the world. It's a beautiful, beautiful message of what was to come at Mount Calvary. An ancient mystery on the brink of revelation. Mount Sinai, thought for centuries to be on the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. Could it be we've been wrong all this time? Biblical adventurer Bob Cornuk and his companion Larry Williams embark on a journey that will change their lives forever. The search for the real Mount Sinai. To order your VHS copy, call 1-800-854-9899. In addition to the video, you'll also receive a colorful map highlighting all the features of this incredible discovery. Call now, 1-800-854-9899 and ask for offer SO92. It's just $30 plus shipping and handling. We'll include the special map absolutely free. Call 1-800-854-9899.